now coming to the surgical treatment of uh, gene cell tumor gene cell tumor uh, by now we know that it is a benign tumor which is locally aggressive it is one of the most common musculoskeletal tumor and, and however still it is most controversial tumor and most debated tumor the coming to the surgical treatment principles there are mainly two uh, ways of uh, looking at it by principles aggressive intralesional curettage or uh, wide resection wide resection has got a recurrence rate from 0 to 16% aggressive intralesional curettage with or without a bone filler like bone allograft bone autograft or uh, application of cement have got a recurrence rate from 8.6 to 16% and this can be combined with with or without uh, adjuvant therapy also by looking at the campanacy grading uh, the uh, recurrence rate by in campanacy 1 and 2 is up to 7% and most of the 1 and 2 can be treated by curettage uh, uh, treatment most of them are amenable for simple curettage however in campanacy 3 grade which has got a recurrence rate of up to 29% uh, they have got a high recurrence rate and requires uh, the wide resection of the tumor and when we perform surgeries in recurrent lesions the recurrence rate again goes up to 34% and adjuvant therapy is most of the uh, is may be required in most of these patients when we look at the adjuvants that are available now for the treatment the phenol nitrogen peroxide organ beam coagulation cryo surgery alcohol and cement they are the frequently used uh, adjuvants after intra uh, lesional curettage however their additional value continues to be debated the evidence says that extensive intra lesional curettage followed by high speed burring and filling up the defect by uh, using either bone cement or uh, allograft will uh, mostly reduces the recurrence rate and there is a limited limited role for other oncologic adjuvants when uh, apart from cement coming to the important steps how to do intra lesional curettage first we need to have adequate exposure of the lesion followed by large cortical window to access the tumor from uh, all uh, corners of the tumor and multiple angled uh, curettes are required uh, which helps us to identify the small small pockets in the corners and access them and high power burr is very important to break the bony ridges here is a 26 years old female patient who had uh, proximal tibia gene cell tumor confirmed by biopsy and uh, we planned for uh, intralesional curettage here adequate exposure was by, uh, done by anterolateral approach and then cortical window was made uh, by about 5 to 5 cm and then adequate uh, access was gained for the tumor and after curettage we did a uh, extended curettage by using high speed burr Uh, all the pockets were uh, completely accessed and then bony ridges were broken and here the high speed burring it helps in uh, it helps the in decreasing the recurrence rate by causing thermal effect which uh, in turn causes additional removal of 1 mm of uh, the margin and helps in uh, decreasing the recurrence rate once we do uh, adequate clearance of the uh, tumor and then do burring we are left over with a large bony defect and here the tumor appears to be extending up to the articular cartilage which uh, with the thin dot margins however the medial bone is um, weight bearing bone is intact so here we can think of uh, salvaging this proximal tu- uh, tumor proximal tibia tumor here if you place a, uh, for the to fill the defect we can use a cement or allograft Uh, since considering the uh, size of the defect which is huge we can combine the allograft along with cement and if you place a cement throughout the defect up to the articular cartilage there is a possibility of destructing the cartilage and then uh, chance of arthritis are present hence we can use a subcondral al- uh, bone graft and in our institution we have a bone bank and we take uh, cancellous bone grafts uh, which are processed and gamma radiated allografts which are placed underneath the cartilage for a, uh, for 3 uh, to 4 uh, uh, millimeters and then uh, place the cement so that uh, uh, thermal necrosis of the articular cartilage doesn't happen we can use either autografts or allografts in our institution we have uh, allografts available so we use allograft 
the first picture shows complete placement of the allograft underneath the articular cartilage followed by cement placement uh, well below the articular cartilage so that it won't cause any thermal necrosis of the cartilage this is called a sandwich technique and in in the post op x ray also we can visualize that the cement is well below the articular margin the bone cement it provides local adjuvant therapy and immediate stability when there is a lodge defect it acts as a, it gives immediate stability and when we look at the x ray in the follow up to look for uh, any recurrence the if we, if we have used cement it presents the ideal ideal radiological features to easily identify the local recurrences it reduces the local recurrence by mainly by thermal necrosis and then its toxic effects here is a 38 years uh, 8 years old gentleman uh, with a uh, campana c1 uh, distal femur uh, giant cell tumor confirmed by biopsy and it was uh, treated by only cement however it is well above the articular margin hence we chose only to pack with uh, cement and even after 5 years we could see that there is no recurrence and patient is doing well without any problems and there are no signs of any arthritis the post -op post operative protocol if we have used if we have done only curettage we can make the patient wait uh, walk with non weight bearing and if we have used uh, cement we can weight bearing uh, we can start weight bearing immediately and follow up as dr raju baskar told we need to follow up is very important to identify the recurrence in the follow up uh, in the coming period when we use cement alone there is a high rate of uh, joint arthritis which is proven in the literature which is reported in the literature also intralesional curettage followed by only allograft also can be used need not be combined all the time with cement and here a 18 years old boy with uh, the giant cell tumor of the distal radius confirmed by biopsy uh, and the tumor is extending up to the uh, physis and this was completely curated and uh, allograft alone was used and patient had a very good outcome even after 5 years there was no recurrence and uh, it is completely healed wide apart from intralesional curettage wide resection is one more option for uh, tumor and wide resection the survival rates are very encouraging the morbidity and mortality are very negligible reconstruction of the defect is quite challenging after uh, wide resection of the tumor the reconstruction after wide excision of the tumor when we are salvaging the uh, limb uh, there are various options available if the tumor is in the proximal tibia we can excise the whole tumor by uh, completely the whole proximal tibia can be excised Uh, and then we can do a ternoplasty where the distal femur can be made in the anterior half of the distal femur can be made into uh, half two halves and then turn it which is called as a ternoplasty and then we can do arthrodesis if the tumor is in the distal radius where we do in, uh, when we do n block resection instead of using a, a ipsilateral fibula which has got high morbidity and then uh, uh, corporal dislocation chances and then uh, wrist problems the ulnar translocation and wrist arthrodesis can be done in distal radius problems and tumor process can be used in situations where uh, distal femur proximal tibia and proximal humerus are invo involved and amputation when the lesion is quite extensive not able to salvage the limb uh, we can do amputation which is also a form of uh, 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 preventing recurrence here is a 33 years old gentleman with extensive osteolytic lesion which is proven by biopsy as giant cell tumor it is quite aggressive tumor ct scan shows very limited bone stock expansion and also the cortices are quite thinned out in this situation we can do a ternoplasty like this where the proximal tibia lesion was completely uh, removed n block resection was done followed by ternoplasty and then uh, nail arthrodesis was done and it is done 5 uh, years ago and there was no signs of recurrence so far here is a uh, 40 years old gentleman with uh, aggressive distal uh, distal radius tumor which is proven by biopsy as giant cell tumor here if you look the distal radius is completely eroded the margins are thinned out and then cortical break is seen and also there is a soft tissue ext extension in the mri in, in uh, the various options are available to reconstruct uh, this kind of uh, tumors once we remove complete whole distal radius we can use ipsilateral fibula or allograft distal radius 
or translocation of the uh, wrist and uh, one bone forearm reconstruction between ulna to wrist. The, we did in, in uh, after excision of the tumor, we did a translocation and then wrist arthrodesis was performed. And uh, it, there was no recurrence till 10 years uh, so far. And recently patient presented with a peri-implant fracture following a trauma. However, the wrist was completely normal, no signs of any recurrence. And he was treated by an additional plate and he had a good outcome as well. And this technique of ulnar translocation and wrist arthrodesis for uh, Campanasi grade 3 joint cell tumor of the distal radius, it is reported by Dr. Ajay Puri and team from Tata Memorial Hospital. And they, report, and they have reported a very good outcome uh, with this technique. Coming to the tumor processes, in situations where the tumor is located quite uh, close to the joints and uh, which is not uh, possible to reconstruct in Campanasi 3 grades, and when there is a bone stock is very less, uh, we can do end block resection of the whole joint and then we can perform a tumor, uh, a replacement surgery by putting a, by a tumor process. Here is a 30 years old female where the extensive osteolytic lesion involving more than uh, two thirds of the distal femur and primarily itself uh, we did a, a tumor processes after end block resection and the uh, patient had a quite uh, good outcome without any recurrence so far. Here is a patient with the proximal tibia joint cell tumor, which is collapsed into varus, thinned out articular margins, and three-fourths of the proximal tibia is completely uh, eroded, and uh, cortical breach, breach is seen. And in MRI, there is extens uh, it is extended into the posterior tissues as well. In these situations, it is not possible to do only curatage and bone grafting, and it is quite uh, difficult to reconstruct. So in this patient, we did an envelope resection and then a tumor process was used and patient had a good outcome without any recurrence so far. Here is a 50 years old female, proximal humerus joint cell tumor confirmed by biopsy. And it looks quite uh, huge and eroded. Here uh, the MRI shows uh, involvement of the cuff as well. In this patient, after complete uh, excision of the proximal uh, humerus tumor, we are, uh, the cuff also was completely was removed. So in this situation, uh, we can see the first picture that uh, cuff also is uh, removed, most of the cuff. And in this situation, when there is no cuff and uh, we can, uh, the instead of doing only uh, hemiarthroplasty, we can do total hip, total shoulder arthroplasty by doing a reverse shoulder, which has, uh, which has got a good function. And this patient went on to have a very good result uh, no signs of any uh, recurrence so far. And uh, patient has got a very satisfactory movements, uh, significant improvement uh, in forward elevation, even though there is partial loss of flexional rotation. Now, having seen the technique of interrelational curatage and then uh, cementing and with sandwich techniques and then uh, wide resection and uh, primarily uh, doing joint replacements and salvage of the uh, limb by thermoplasty, let us see how to treat a recurrent lesion also. Here is a patient with uh, 37 years old male, distal femur, uh, joint cell tumor, and the medial, mainly involving the medial femoral condyle. Biopsy showed uh, joint cell tumor, and it, it was quite uh, extensive. And patient presented four months after the biopsy, and it shows increase in size of the tumor. Uh, the MRI also shows there is increase in the size of the tumor. This is the clinical picture uh, showing the involvement of the medial femoral condyle. Completely it was curated and then uh, burring was done and thorough uh, curatage and high speed burring. And then uh, we, we tried to uh, give a chance by giving, uh, by trying a sandwich technique in this patient. Initially, allograft was placed underneath the cartilage, articular cartilage so that uh, the application of cement doesn't cause any arthritis to the femoral, uh, femoral articular cartilage. And uh, this is the post-operative x-ray showing uh, well uh, curated and then uh, packed with cement. However, uh, and it was confirmed as a GCT following a curatage. And however, patient uh, came back within a year duration with the recurrence of the same tumor. And it was confirmed by MRI. And the whole tumor was completely excised and then uh, uh, a tumor process was placed and with a long stem. And uh, this is the final post-operative x-ray showing good position of the implants. And 
the whole specimen was sent for biopsy and showed the margins were clear completely and there are no signs of any recurrence so far. Here is a patient with a distal tibial uh, giant cell tumor, which was initially treated with curatase and uh, cement alone and presented with recurrence within uh, two years duration. Elsewhere treated initially and then advised for amputation. And uh, by looking at the X-ray, we can we notice that the whole articular cartilage is involved and the whole distal tibia is involved. In this situation, uh, the calculated defect after excision of the distal tibia was around 8 centimeters. We decided to salvage without doing any amputation in this patient by removal of the whole tumor after thorough dissection. And then uh, the whole, the similar sized allograft was used to, uh, to, plas to match correctly the dome of the talus and then retrograde nail arthrodesis was performed. Here, the, the technique was very important. Throughout the length of the allograft uh, inside the medullary canal, the eye-like crest grafts were placed so that the healing happens between the allograft and post bone proximally and distally. And in this patient, we, uh, by two years, it was completely, com completely healed without any problem. And uh, so far, uh, 10 years since the surgery, and there are no signs of any recurrence. Apart from this kind of salvage techniques, Amputation also needs to be performed in few patients with recurrence of the lesions uh, superadded by infections where, the, uh, where it is difficult to reconstruct or salvage the limb. Uh, this is a patient, a 40 years old gentleman uh, with a proximal tibial GCT, which was uh, the uh, CT scan shows completely thinned out cortices and then posterior extension also is seen and the biopsy confirmed it as giant cell tumor. Initially, uh, curatage and uh, uh, attempt was made to salvage the proximal tibia by putting by doing a sandwich technique. However, uh, this patient went on to this is uh, immediate post op X ray. However, the patient went on to have a recurrence within a, a one year duration. And in this situation where the the proximal tibia cannot be salvaged, uh, amputation is also best choice to save the life of the limb, the life of the patient also. Here is a 25 years old uh, lady who presented with distal tibial uh, giant cell tumor, which was initially curated by us and used allografts and eyelacrest grafts combined. However, a patient presented within three months time with a recurrence and uh, followed by, uh, we treated by uh, distal tibial allograft and the complete end block resection of the tumor was performed. However, patient showed recurrence within nine months period and hence uh, we did a bilone amputation in this patient. So to conclude, giant cell tumor, the treatment of giant cell tumor is, remains uh, controversial still. Uh, the important steps are adequate curatage, filling, the, filling up the defect by using uh, uh, either bone cement or uh, sandwich technique by using allografts and autografts and adjuvant therapy is very important. Uh, what is important is uh, adequate clearance of the disease either by doing uh, intralesional curatage or by complete excision of the tumor. The challenge lies in the treatment of benign tumors is by balancing satisfactory recurrence rates with acceptable surgical morbidity. Thank you, sir.